um hi guys um today we are going to be creating i'm going to be teaching you how to create a stopwatch this type of stopwatch like this using html css and javascript only. so you can start the stopwatch stop it and also reset it so let's get started Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is see I'm already in a, opened a folder in my Visual Studio code. So the first thing I'm going to do is create the index.html file. And then the index.html file, I'm going to put the header tag. And I'm able to do this because I'm using a Visual Studio code extension called emits. So all I have to do is put the exclamation on the tab and I get the header. So then let me change the title to stop watch tutorial. Yeah, I think that's it. Then I'm going to create the styles.css file. Styles.css and don't mind this. You can name your style style sheet anything you want. But make sure your um, index.html file is index.html so you don't have any issues in case you want to deploy it put it on github or anything so like it's important for your styling you can use anything you like so in the index.html i'm going to link in the other tag i'm going to link the styles.css as that and we're going to be using javascript so i'm going to add that as well so that i don't forget anything you know and so i'm just going to create the file then link it here i like linking it in the body tag i think you can link it in the edit ed tag as well so i'm just going to put the script this will be app.js that's the name of the file so that's that now we're going to start the adding the HTML file first, then we do the styling after that. Mm, let's get started. Okay, so now the first thing I'm going to do in the index.html is add the stopwatch section. So I'm going to add a section with a class of stopwatch section. And then I'm going to add a container to contain everything in this. I'm going to name this stopwatch. Watch mm, container. Then I'm going to add an editing one to add the time where the stop is going to the stop is going to be displayed. So just going to add this for now. Then I'm going to add um, a div of buttons. This is going to contain the buttons, the start, stop, reset, and all that. So then we have a button with a class of button, and then the start button. And I'm just going to say start, then let's copy and paste, and then the reset button. I'm just going to say reset. Then the stop button. This is going to say stop, and that is it for the index.html. So save that. Now to show this on the um, the local host, we're going to I'm going to be using this go live. It's a live server. So on on Visual Studio Code, when I click on it. It's going to be displaying everything I do immediately. I save it. It's going to display it on the browser. So see, if I should change anything, let me reduce this. If I should change, oh sorry. If I should change anything, let's see this, and I save it. Immediately changes. Can you see? So you don't have to like restart the server over and over again. You just save it. It's also is an extension of Visual Studio Code. Makes it very easy to do things on to do stuff like this. So now we're going to go to the styling. 
Okay, now let's do the styling. Um, the first thing I'm going to be doing in the styling is actually adding the colors I'm going to use. I really like doing that, so I just use. I don't have to like see the colors over and over again. So the way I'm going to do that is this. I'm going to use root. This will allow me to give the value to the variables I want. And I'm going to name this um main color. And that is ash zero d one b one e. That is like green or darker. Then the um the red color. I don't know if I'm going to use this or not, but I'm going to see in the long run. And this is ash e d f to if yeah that is it i'm going to use the red color and then there's the light color i'm really terrible at naming so i just use this and we're only using three colors and that's um oh sorry this is the light color E D F to F and then this is ash five two zero five zero A. I think that's correct. Yeah. So the colors I'm going to be using and to have a max width. I like adding a max width, so I'm going to explain why I like adding a max width later on. Um I'm going to make that like 800 pixels. I'm going to see maybe it's too small or not. I want to change this later on. Okay, so that's all for the setup. Then I'm going to do this asterisk. This is going to um it's going to display for every single element in the HTML file. Everything that's all the asterisk it categorizes everything together. So I'm going to give it border box, box sizing, border box. Then the body tag, I'm going to give that the font family of, I'm just going to use one of these, any one of these, let's see. Because I'm not, not really styling at all. Let's try this. I think I should add some serif. Can I add that? Uh, I don't know. And padding zero, margin zero. Save that. Yeah, there it is. Okay, and one more thing. Mm, not yet. Now the next thing I'm going to be doing is the the section the stop watch section so i'm going to do stop watch section i'm going to give that a height of 100 viewport height that's the height of your the screen any screen you're using the small phone the bigger phone the desktop that's going to be the height of the screen that's 100 viewport height. You can see 90. I'm going to show you. Let me give this a better color of red first so I can show you what the height means. This is, I oh, don't mind the, don't mind the margin here. This is because of the heading one. It has its own default margin. So if I show you 100 viewport height, let me, let me remove the heading one. Let me remove the margin so you can see it clearly. Margin zero. See? So this is 100 viewport height. So it takes everything. Let's say 90. That's 90, 80, 50, 10. See? So 100 viewport height is the height of the screen. It doesn't then the width as well is 100 viewport width. Also the same. This is 90. Can you see that? 90, 10. So 100 because I don't want it. I don't want any overflows or anything. 
Oh, that reminds me on the body i'm going to put an overflow of eating so there's any there's no scroll effect or any anything no scroll effect so now i'm going to give this a background color of vr that isn't the main color and instead of that's why i prefer this because you can just decide to like instead of putting the colors one by one actually what this as the rgb that just put it in one place if i want to change the color i can just change it here and that's all it changes automatically for everything that's why i prefer this than other colors and all so now i'm going to put the container at the center so that it can be at the center of the page so that's display flex align night and center that aligns it to the center then justify content center and that places it at the center can you see let me reduce this so you can see it clearly and that is that is the container there so i think that's all for the section now the next thing is the stopwatch stopwatch container oh I can just spell this right container yeah and I'm going to give this a background I don't actually have a background color so I'm going to give so that I can see it I'm just going to give it a background color of red don't mind me I just really like using red so I'm going to give this a width of um, let's see I like using percentages 80% um, that's too much 70 50 let's see i think 50 is all right and a height of which is 500 pixels wow that's a lot 300 yeah i think that's okay i'm going to give this a border radius of 30 pixels i think that's okay yeah and i'm going to give it a border so I'm, going to use the, so I'm going to remove the background color so i'm going to give it a border of 10 pixels solid var the light color there and this solid this is the, the, the um syntax for border you can use there's dashes i think there's dash yeah there's dotted or something yes so different so I'm going to be using the solid one and then the next thing since we want to put the buttons and everything at the center we're going to do the same thing on display let me just copy and paste and that places it at the center don't mind me moving up and I just want you to like see everything um for this one the flex direction is going to be the, we're going to add the flex direction of column you get to see that yeah because the default flex direction is row that's why i didn't have to add it here so in this place it is completely changed to column so they can like line up horizontally and i'm going to, give to say column gap of let's see 30 pixels sorry not colon gap I want, to, I want to put the gap here not here this is this is the colon gap and this is the row gap so it's going to be a row gap of yeah 30 pixels let's say 40 you can change it over the long run i'm going to feel after figuring everything out so i'm going to remove this the background color is going to be transparent see according to this um, even the height is like smaller I'm going to reduce the height and the width and I'm going to increase the width the height is let's get 60 percent let's see it's almost the same yeah let's give it a height let's reduce the height i think 200 no 250 yeah i think that's it and the border radius is like too much 
it's just as a product of 10 pixels yeah that's okay that looks good and then i'm going to give this a max width of vr max width because you don't want it to like pass that particular width in case the screen gets bigger and bigger so you want it to remain at this width if i give it a max width of 300 let's say 300 pixels sorry 300 so it remains at 300 even though i put this width to be would i put the width to be 60 percent it's still 300 so we're going to change that back to 800 so it cannot pass this particular width here it's always going to be 800 pixels so now the next thing i'm going to work on is the heading one since there's only one heading one i don't really have to target it so we're going to give the font size of 3 rm and i like using rm so i prefer using em em takes the um how do i explain the font size of the browser yeah the font size of the browser and rm is one rm is equals to 16 pixels so 3 rm is 3 times 16. the reason i like using i just got really used to using rm because rm like this i I think in the browser when you can like change the font sizes of the of your browser you can actually change it if you're using rm but if you're using pixels it's going to like remain the same it's not going to like increase or decrease so i like using rem for the comfort of people like people want to change the font size if it's too small or too big or that on the browser so now i use rem i just really 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 love it so i think 3 rem is 4 not too much yeah, I think for is big enough, base bold and everything. And the color, VAR, the light color. Yeah. And I think it looks okay. Looks good. Like getting there. Okay. Mm, let's see, it's a little smaller. And I'm going to add one more thing the letter spacing of this um this is like bringing it closer if i put five pixels it spreads it out so the minus like brings the brings it closer the fonts to closer together i think this is okay minus six pixels now so it comes closer together it's fine like that i just prefer it and there's change this to 50. like 50 is too small i don't really like it mm. this is 55 i don't know i just really like percentages and i think that's okay we're just going to use that now the next thing we're going to be doing is the btn the button that's the class i gave the general class for all the buttons all the buttons so we're going to be doing this is giving it a padding of 10 pixels top and bottom 15 pixels left and right and i think that's too much so there's just five pixels top and bottom or oh, nine and i think i'm going to give it a width of hmm, let's say width of 68 percent Okay, so to do that, I'm going to give the buttons the div containing everything a display of flex. Align items of center and then justify content of space between. It makes no difference though. But I'm going to give the column gap of 30 pixels. Mm, yeah, I think that looks okay so let's give this a width of let's try 100 it actually really makes no difference though hmm, let's see <sighs> 100 pixels
150. Oh, that's too much. A border radius of a border radius of let's see 10 pixels. Yeah, and then a border of zero. A border of two pixels solid. It's not just zero. Yeah. Let's reduce the pattern. Sorry. And the font size, let's choose the increase the font size of let's see 1.1 rm font weight of 600 and the color let's change the color yeah Mm, that is it. Mm, I think this is like too much. This should be one I am. Mm, smaller. And I'm going to reduce the font size of this to so 3.5 RM. I think this looks okay. It might not be totally identical, but. I think a little, mm, a little smaller. Mm, let's reduce this border radius. Else can we change the column gap or the row gap? Let's change it to 30. I think it's like too close. Let's just let's say 35. This looks almost the same. Is there, I think this looks okay as well. I mean, there's no issue, nothing. Okay, so I'm going to the next thing I'm going to work on is the um the over effects we have in here. This over effect. Normally, people just add it, like just do beating over. And then putting everything else on, but I don't really do this. I prefer using this media queries, this media queries thing, where this media, and it checks the over effect. If you're using a device that I can allow over effects, then it's going to allow it. But if not, it's not going to do the over effect at all. That's why in most times in Android phones, when you click on the button and then and the over effect is added. Since there's no over effect on um, on Android or any mobile device, so there will be any there will be the over effect is going to be added there. It's not going to go away because like then it's going to be weird and all. So instead of just having that, I'm going to use this over, then add this. Then that's going to check if the device can allow an over effect, so the effect is going to be added. So now that I bit in, we add over and we're going to change the background color to transparent and then the color itself to the light color. And so we have that. And you see it's like going really fast, just it does not like look good and all. So I'm just going to add the transition. It's like 0 0.5 seconds is in and out let's see 
it takes some time let's see it using that's like really slow so let's use 0 0.3 seconds and let me just use it in and out oh, sorry mistake and we have the over effect i think i should increase the border a little into three pixels let's change that here to three pixels and i think that's all that's everything now the last thing we're going to be doing in the css is the um responsiveness on how it's going to look like on other mobile device so i'm going to yeah, I'll bring up the developer to on chrome i think the shortcut is Control shift high yeah see see this is what i'm talking about see what it looks like on a mob um, on a mobile device really bad so we're going to like do this this is what it looks like on a big screen and this is where the max width comes in you see the way i'm increasing it and it goes to the point of 800 pixels it's not increasing again so that's what it, that is so now we're going to be adding the media career so what it looks like then okay this is looking okay then at this point of 930 pixels we're going to reduce the font size add the max width 930 pixels which means like at the maximum which means other lower pixels are going to like take these features but once it reaches 930 and it's going higher it's not going to be valid again so now i'm going to do change the edit one give it a font size of 3 rm see at this if you go bigger it goes back so we reduce the font size and the buttons we reduce the width of the button sorry the button we give it a width of let's see what was the width before 120 100 pixels yeah i think that looks okay then this is seven seven hundred and I really like doing it every like going every small with checking everything like seven hundred and eighty three pixels. Um, I'm going to reduce the column gap. The column gap. What was it before? Sorry, that's thirty pixels. I change it to twenty. give some more space and everything then mm, but really it gives you some more space let's reduce, reduce this to, to 20 pixels and the width of the button as well to 70 pixels oh sorry width to 70 pixels keep typing nonsense I think seven is too much. Eighty. Mm, or ninety. Ninety pixels, I guess. Then when it reaches this point, seven hundred pixels. I know that's not much, but just wanted to look good at on all screens. At the max width of seven hundred pixels. I'm going to change the flex the buttons, give it the flex direction of color. Yeah, and the row gap of that pixels. It does not too much. Oh, too much thing. Yeah. I'm going to change the height, the section container, and give it the height of auto on the padding of 
20 pixels to come back around. Should we say 40 pixels? Yeah, I think that's much better. Then this, then the button, we have a width of, let's see what 100% looks like. Oh, that's really small. Mm. Yeah. This is going to take a bit of 100%. And this looks like this. Should we reduce it a little? Yeah. I think that looks okay. And then at this point of 600 and I think I should increase the width here when I do this I'm going to give this a um, a width of this is what 100% looks like oh sorry Okay, night. Eighty percent. This is what eighty percent looks like. I think that looks okay. So we have to reduce this to thirty percent. Yeah. And then that works out up to this point. At media screen of. At media of let's see 450 let's see, 460 pixels sorry max width of 700 and 460 pixels i'm going to change the the buttons give it a width of 50 percent yeah and then the edit one a font size of 2.5 RM. I think it's kind of small though. Mm. What does 3 RM? It's just 2.6, 2.7. Yeah, and then. Sorry. <laughs> then this is the smallest screen. And that is. At media, of three hundred and sixty nine, I'm going to change. Let's just copy and paste this. This is going to have, let's see, this is going to have a font size of cell two RM, and then this. I think it looks okay. It looks too big. Let's reduce it to foot. I think that's it. And that's all. So I'm going to check it on an iPhone next. This is what it looks like. On a, let's say the smallest Google Fold. It looks like that. On a, looks like that. Then this. And then that's it. That is all for the styling. So now, okay, so now I'm going to do the JavaScript. The first thing I'm going to do is select all the buttons and the text there, the editing one. So that's const start etn. I'm going to name that. You can name it whatever you want. Document.query selector. I'm going to select the class I give it, start btn. And let me copy and paste that. This is going to be the reset between and this is going to be the stop between let's rename it here as well this is reset and then stop between and then i'm going to get the other one i'm going to name this text area and that's going to be document dot query selector and I'm going to pass in the heading one. So there's only one heading one in the HTML. So that's what I'm going to select. 
now i'm going to create a function that's going to cut um carry the rest of the functions of the the time stopwatch so i'm going to be using arrow function if you know what that is there's the normal function that's function i'm going to name this stopwatch and then we do this but i just like i've been i got used to using the arrow function which is this stopwatch i think that's the spelling and do this i got really used to it that's what i use most of the time so now in the stopwatch we're going to outside the function so since we're going to be needing this particular variable in all the we're going to be needing this in all the in a, a lot of functions in other places other than the, the this function so i'm going to give this let seconds i'm using the let because i can't use const I can also use variable but i just prefer using the let i can't use const because I, I have to i want to redeclare this in other functions so i'm going to call it seconds and i'm going to assign equals zero and also i'm going to let i'm going to call this interval this is going to carry the interval and that's i'm going to make this now so inside the function the first thing i'm going to be doing is adding one plus equals one to the seconds in every interval every seconds you're going to be adding one to this variable so instead of just doing seconds plus equals one i'm just going to do plus plus and that's also the same that is one to the seconds every so now i'm going to declare another variable this is going to be the seconds the variable is going to be divided for the seconds the minutes and the hour so i'm going to do let uh i already named the seconds let's change it let's change this seconds it's also the same we just use that to equals or let's change this to counter counter and change this to seconds i think that's easier to understand and seconds is going to be you're going to take the counter and you're going to find the module of the counter when you divide it by 60. This model means when I divide the counter by 60, the remainder, like when this is 60, when the counter is at 60 and divided by 60, the model is, is going to be remaining zero. So the remainder is zero. That's what the seconds is going to be. Because 60 min 60 seconds make one minute. Once it is 60, I can't like just continue increasing or continue increasing the seconds by that 60 61 so i'm going to divide it by 60 to give it to give the model okay so now i'm going to be doing the minutes and the hours so i'm going to do let the minutes and minutes pause so we're going to be rounding this we're going to do the counter first we're going to divide it by 60 then we're going to round it down so in case the, you know when the counter is 60, 61, when the counter is 61 and you divide by 60, we're going to get some kind of decimal points, one point something. We don't want the timer to be in decimal points. So we're going to be rounding it down using this math.flow. And this is going to be rounding it, the counter, whatever, whatever value we get down, when we get 1.4, it rounds it down to 1. So you understand together. I'm going to do the same thing for the hours. Let hours 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 is equal to math dot flow. Then you pass it the counter divided by three thousand six hundred. Isn't three thousand six hundred because you know sixty seconds make one minute and sixty minutes makes one hour. So yeah, sixty times sixty. That's 3600 seconds equals one hour. So then to show what we have been doing, we're going to 
update the text area of dot text content to be equal to so using template string you can also use concatenation which is doing the hours plus the column plus that but I prefer to this because it's like easier then we're going to pass in the hours then the column then minutes then the column then we're going to pass in hours sorry seconds and now we should see we should see this I'm going to then invoke the function so you can like see the value this is 51 because counter in this device involved we had one to it so that is it 51 when this is 60 this is one minute um 1200 that is 20 minutes um let's do 4000 seconds 4000 that's one hour now you see this we don't want one hour 66 minutes does that make any sense no so to, to solve this we're going to have to change the arrangement of this let's do hours minutes then seconds then we're going to change this instead of just using the counter we're going to open a bracket i'm going to go to counter i'm going to subtract the counter from let's open another bracket from the hours the current hours we have multiplied by 3600 then we divide it by 60 then so if i should save this now we have this six minutes we do 7000 one minute let's do 9000 we have two hours 30 minutes so that is it for that now the next thing we're going to be doing is start doing the stats this stats function to start the stopwatch so i'm going to create a function i'm going to name that start stopwatch and that's going to be equal to a function we call an arrow function and then we're going to take the interval the variable that we've looked then and assign it to the start interval start set sorry set interval function that is already in javascript the set interval function takes in a function and an interval which means the time required for this function to execute so every if you put this let's put 100 and just so you know this interval is always in milliseconds so this is 1000 milliseconds which equals one seconds so if you put for every after every one second this function is going to be invoked this particular function before it so since we are i we already created this top watch function from that instead of doing this here we can also put everything here but to make it easier and have a cleaner code we created a secret function for it so we're going to pass in this top watch so for after every interval the stop watch is going to um what should i say the stop watch is going to do this So now we're going to invoke the start stopwatch. And let me change it back to zero. So we have one seconds, two, three seconds, four, and then continuously. Next thing we want to do is the reset stopwatch. So const reset. Let's do the stop stopwatch. Stop. I can just spell this right. And that will be sorry, does a mistake equals to and then in this stop stop we're going to, to just it's very easy just a function called clear interval so this clear interval we take in this interval 
a set interval function the function we created and it's going to stop it immediately this front porch function is stopped is invoked sorry so we're going to do clear interval i'm going to pass in the interval and then we're going to set the interval back to null and that's the stop stopwatch then for the reset stopwatch we are going to we are going to invoke the stopwatch the stop stopwatch stop stopwatch we are going to invoke that because it's going to set the interval back so now we are going to clear the interval and then we are going to set the text area the text content back to zero and then the seconds to the counter sorry the counter to back to zero and that is that now let's let's add the functions to the stop the buttons now we are going to add the the function let's remove this from here then we're going to add these functions on the buttons so the start button dot we're going to add different list now we're adding the click event then inside this we're going to add the start stopwatch then the same for the reset button and the stop button let's change this the reset And then the stop so let's try this let's at the start get seconds the stop stops and then the reset mm, why is the reset not doing reset stop watch And then what's wrong? The start, the stop, and then the reset. Let's see, is there an error? The console, yes, there is. Text area dot text content is not a function. Let's see that. Oh, the equals to just simple equals to then save so we start we stop and then reset now let's deal with the the format the starts so it changes so we're going to do so we're going to check if the seconds is less than 10 then the second is equals to this then the same turn for the minutes and the hours So let's try this starts we have that this just click on stop and then reset then start so there's an issue here let's stop stop so there's an issue and I think I know where the issue is. Here. I'm going to write if interval. Then we're going to, if the interval is true, then we're going to return this so nothing happens. So start. The 
start stop and then reset and that is it for our stopwatch thank you for staying don't forget to like comment and subscribe